Well, I, I think a lot of the younger artists don't actually ha realize that um, it, it wasn't just all here, that everything that is here was built by people who are actually still here. Like, you know, all of our arts organizations, they're, they're, most of them were started in the 70s, which is not that long ago. Yeah. And they're actually quite fragile because any organization is, 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 is the heartbeat of the people who run it, right, and the people who support it. And people are fragile. And um, a lot of people, I think a lot of young artists just assume this is the lay of the land, but they don't understand that somebody, s s that, that we, this is something that has been built by human hopes and dreams and ambitions and that it can also be changed and built upon. So, anyway, you... And it can be lost. And it can be lost. The whole infrastructure that we take for they granted can, just collapse. can be lost. Like yeah. Theatre Ontario, you said, is just going yeah. down. Yesterday, yesterday it was announced that Theatre Ontario would be folding, that the board of directors um, were had an announced that they were going to be closing that organization, which made me really sad because when I came back from China, after having quit acting and going to China, um, I came back and I was really surprised to find myself um, applying for um, work as in this newly created um, sort of a job as cross-cultural coordinator. I actually applied to the Toronto Theatre Alliance and they, they, they interviewed me three times. Each time, they got, I think they got more and more scared because they wanted someone basically to build a database. And I was like, let's change the world. I know how to fix it, right? But that's not what they wanted. They wanted to build a, a multilingual media base so that mainstream theaters could promote to uh, people of color. That's basically what they wanted. You mean get into the South Asian community and get into make the... sure that yeah, make sure that that Mervish would advertise effectively to at some level because their membership was the theaters that existed, so that was their first thing. But Theatre Ontario wanted to build programming and resources for for their members who were young artists, um, young aspiring artists, and and my uh, boss Sandra Tullock, she hired me after my first interview. Um, uh, and uh, like I think she she called. There was a message by the time I walked home um, that that she wanted to hire me. Um, so I worked there, and and it was really empowering because I was able to apply all of this painful experience to make um, make it to ensure that other artists wouldn't go through quite as much agony as I had gone through. So I compiled. Um, I basically I, I compiled a set of resources so that any young artists of color who came in, I would say, let, let show me where, where show me where you are. Okay, here here's a prototype for a better resume. These are the theaters you should start with first because they're proactive. These are the programs that you could apply for. So start thinking about it. You could apply for a professional theater training grant. You could apply for this. And I, it's similarly with with young artists who who are coming with projects basically saying, okay, so here's what you're going to do. You can apply here and here and here, and, 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 and if I didn't know, I could connect them with someone. At the same time, I was Sorry, meeting, this is where Theatre Ontario? This is when I was at Theatre Ontario. Okay. And at the same time, I was also meeting with people who were in similar positions at other organizations, because all of these other organizations were suddenly addressing cultural diversity because you mean the Ontario Council of the Arts, Toronto Arts League Council, mm -hmm. Canada Council of the Arts. Yeah. Those? So, okay. so in Toronto, it was uh, Metro because Metro had it was still around as its own <coughs> government and providing funding. Toronto Arts Council, Toronto Theatre Alliance, uh, Theatre Ontario, and uh, there were a couple of other, uh, um, you know, people from. The, sort of the arts and culture division of, of city of North York because it was a city then. Um, they were very proud that they were a city. Every time they came to the table, it's like from the city of North York, not the borough. There, it was a big deal. Uh, and trying to coordinate, share data, um, coordinate our efforts, and, um, it, and I think it made a big How much of the difference. change, again, is how much of the change is driven by? activists such as yourself and how much is it actually driven by the institutions it's both it's in coordination like you can't like you're you're in that in that time the best thing you could do was as an activist was to influence policy 
either by giving giving information to or pressuring um, organizations to change their policies. So there were a lot of people. I was only one person, and there were many people who had worked longer and harder than I. And, and they were they they they. It was their efforts that made the money come down so that I could get hired. Um, and there are so many of them that um, I could start listing, but I would leave important people out. But I remember like Sandy Ross pushing Actra. Yes. Sandy pushed and pushed and Sandy pushed Ross, actress. and she was she was she was key. Uh, Sandy Ross was huge in Actra, and and at the time that I started at Theatre Ontario, she was. Um, I think she had just become president of Actor Toronto, and she had Into the Mainstream, which was this, she put together this this uh, catalog of, of act, actor members of color, um, basically to say, you keep telling me you can't find people here. And, you know, she was, she was, this, she was the salesperson for the, for, the, for the whole movement. 